Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. What started out as a righteous demonstration has devolved for a few folks out there. I hope everyone downtown realizes that this is your city too. These were the words of Mayor Ron Nuremberg after violence and destruction ensued downtown overnight. What started as a peaceful protest through the streets of San Antonio's downtown district didn't end that way. Now there's a local disaster declaration that's been issued as well as curfew. We have those images of the damages done downtown just ahead on GMSA. Good morning, 6 o'clock this Sunday, May 31st. Now where you're going to get right to the latest news. It is emotional all around the Alamo City and all around the country. Feelings are raw. Parts of our downtown lay in shambles, and that is how we begin our show today. What began as peaceful protests and a vigil to honor George Floyd turned into violence and destruction here in our community. The death of George Floyd in Minneapolis striking a chord with many here at home who are calling for change. As Tiffany Huertas reports, the turn of events overnight leading to tear gas, injured officers, and a new curfew. Large crowds of protesters took to the streets of downtown San Antonio Saturday, gathering near the Alamo. Accountability for police brutality. Following the death of George Floyd, a white officer in Minneapolis placing his knee on Floyd's neck before he lost consciousness and died. The peaceful protests in the Alamo City took a turn in the evening. <laughs> Windows were broken, spray paint covered buildings, and other property was damaged downtown. Throwing rocks and bottles at cars. Three officers were also injured as police tried to get crowds under control. We did throw gas. Uh, we, when it was time to disperse, we gave the appropriate orders, uh, gave them a chance to disperse, gave them a place to disperse to. Uh, and when they didn't do it within the time frame, we, uh, we fired pepper balls. Uh, and broke the crowds up that way. The city is assessing the damage and has issued a curfew for downtown, which will begin at 10 o'clock tonight until 6 Monday morning. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And we just want to clarify that curfew is only for the downtown area. And as Tiffany said, it will be for tonight as well. Chief William McManus says three people were arrested, but at this time there's not a clear answer for what exactly they were arrested for. And remember, San Antonio's planned demonstration all came in the aftermath of George, George Floyd, and it did start peacefully as people began to gather at Travis Park. Hours later, the crowd got larger and a protest turned into destruction. Now, to help keep peace, city leaders issued a local disaster declaration and temporary curfew. Our Alicia Beretta live downtown with more on the aftermath and the damages. Good morning. Well, that crowd started with about 1,000 people meeting yesterday around 5 p.m. at Travis Park. And again, we've seen those images. It just grew and grew over hours. And when things got out of hand was in the evening. So this morning, we're driving around downtown to see that damage for ourselves. And what I can tell you, a lot of businesses tags. Right now, we're at River Center Mall. And this is the area where the bulk of the damage is. So here we see some areas tagged rise up. Uh, down the street, I can tell you, um, Fogo de Chao, I believe, is that restaurant. That entrance completely shattered over here as well. This window shattered. So a lot of damages that we're seeing this morning. While the crowd peacefully protested on their way to public safety headquarters, we know we're told by police that tensions grew at Alamo Plaza between police, those protesting police brutality, and the Texas Freedom Force. Around that time, police say some agitators began to fling raw and fire extinguishers through business through windows of businesses businesses and that's really what um, kicked things off this morning we know that curfew and disaster declaration is still in place they were issued late last night and they will be it going they will stay in effect until Monday morning so what this means during this temporary curfew no one can travel on public street that disaster declaration explains that even if you're on foot on bicycle you use a scooter a skateboard you won't be allowed anyone who violates this could be facing a misdemeanor and that includes up to a $1,000 fine and up to 180 days in jail. And again, there was that press conference last night and just ahead on GMSA on the next half hour, more on why city leaders felt that it was really, really necessary to issue this local disaster declaration as well as the curfew. Reporting live downtown, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Alicia. In response to these protests and the ongoing riots, Governor Greg Abbott sending state re resources throughout the state, and that includes the cities of Houston, Dallas, Austin, and of course here in San Antonio. All of this in effort to maintain public safety. The governor says DPS has sent more than 1,500 officers to assist all local police departments in three cities and that more resources will be provided as needed. Now, in a press release, the governor says, quote, Texas and America mourn the senseless loss of George Floyd and the actions that led to his death are reprehensible and should be condemned in the strongest terms possible as Texans exercise their First Amendment rights. It is imperative that order is maintained and private property is protected, end quote. Right now, we have complete coverage on our website, everything you need to know about the disaster declaration, the downtown curfew, and even pictures of how the protests progressed into scenes of rioting. We're also looking beyond San Antonio as protests continue to unfold in so many other cities across Texas and around the country. It's all on our website again at kset.com. Just look for these stories on our homepage. All right, toss into weather now. Yesterday, calm nice outside mm -hmm. and then today we have before the show we go over the weather for the web Yes. Sarah, dropping some knowledge on me what we can expect today. Yeah, it looks like we are going to see scattered downpours throughout the day for us here in San Antonio and around the KSAT 12 viewing area. In fact, we've already got some returns on the radar out toward Del Rio and in southern Kenny County, seeing some moderate rainfall there in southern Uvalde County, just a few light rain showers and some heavier rain across parts of southern Kerr County and right along I-10 between Comfort and Bernie. Now, the nature of the weather today today is not going to be severe. Uh, these showers are really just going to be around and we're going to have to dodge them throughout the day. It'll stay fairly cloudy as well. It's 72 degrees at the airport, 70 in Bulverde, 73 Canyon Lake in the 60s up in the hill country. But of course, if you get one of those showers, temperatures should drop pretty quickly. Coming up, I'm going to have a look at whether or not you should do some yard work during the first part of the week. Looks like we're going to see continuing chances for rain in the forecast. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police in New Braunfels are reporting a woman has died after going under the water in the Canal River. Now, the victim has been identified as 22-year-old Devon Walton from Houston. That incident happened around 4 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Police say when she resurfaced from the water, she was having trouble breathing. She became unconscious and unresponsive before EMS arrived. Officials say she later died in the hospital. Also new this morning, several families without a home to return to after a fire destroyed eight apartments in a complex on the city's northwest side. Firefighters arrived here to the Sapphire Apartments. This is the 8,000 block of Fredericksburg Road, all of which happened just after midnight. When they arrived, they found 16 apartment units on fire. The cause of the blaze still under investigation. We are still waiting for the final estimate of the damage and how many people, how many families are going to be displaced. We do know the American Red Cross was called to the scene to try and help out. We now know the identity of the man arrested in connection with recent vandalism at the Alamo Cenotaph. 25-year-old Noah Escamilla is facing a Class B misdemeanor charge for graffiti. Now, that graffiti was discovered on the Cenotaph early Friday morning. The message written out in red spray paint seemed to condemn white supremacy, capitalism, and the Alamo itself. San Antonio police say it's unclear if there are others involved with this incident. And time now, 6.08, 72 degrees out. A big book giveaway for those students who are hungry for knowledge still ahead on GMSA. How many books have been distributed by that academy? And a day that will go down in the history books. Where were you when the first commercial space launch happened? Well, you need to know about SpaceX and the plan going forward. That's next. We were in the car, but Rooney and I were watching. I wasn't driving. On the KSAT app. Of course. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam. 72 degrees. A little more humid this morning uh, than yesterday. It's kind of a sign of things to come. We're going to check in with Sarah in just a bit. And welcome back. It is 612. Another chapter hit the books in the history of space exploration. SpaceX's second attempt to launch two NASA astronauts on a mission to the International Space Station was successful. Big success. Not only was this historical in terms of commercialized space travel, but also the first launch of astronauts from the United States in nine years. So just in case you missed it, here it is, veteran astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. Wait for it. They're getting ready. They're going on there. Let's see, are we actually going to get to the liftoff? Either way, they were lifting off from the, there, there it is, <laughs> lifting off from the legendary launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. 
Elon Musk's SpaceX now joining the ranks of just a few governments, and they actually became the first commercial company in history to put humans in orbit. Now, most of that flight is piloted autonomously. That's one of the many upgrades to Crew Dragon from the shuttle. After that 19-hour journey, the next major milestone will be docking with the International Space Station. All right, so do you guys remember where you were when you watched the first commercialized <laughs> space launch? You mean I yesterday? Yeah, yeah. yesterday afternoon. Yesterday I, afternoon. I remember where I was. I was on the couch. That's nice. where I was. Watching, yes. Watching. But hey, I promised everybody that I would talk about a uh, lawn forecast, whether or not you could do some yard work. And unfortunately, the next few days, uh, it's, it's going to be a no-go because we're going to have chances for good scattered rain through Tuesday. But afterwards, should be okay by the end of the week will have sunshine and of course it'll be hot as well so hold off on the yard work for a couple of days hold off on the car wash for a couple of days as well we're starting off this morning in the low 70s 72 at the airport 72 in canyon lake 71 at port sa meanwhile it's in the 60s up in the hill country 63 in kerrville and 63 in comfort a little bit cooler there uh, but the big story today is the fact that we are going to see areas of rain once again we've had a couple of quiet days here but the storminess is going to return today at least it won't be as uh, severe. We've got a low pressure system uh, right over Mexico right now, and that's swinging around tropical moisture from the Gulf of Mexico itself. And the nature of tropical moisture and tropical uh, showers is that you get those big fat raindrops and you don't really get severe weather. So that's going to be the case today. Looking at the radar, you can see that we're already starting to see some showers uh, on the radar itself. Off to the west, southern Kinney County getting some decent moderate rain right now. Del Rio, a few sprinkles for you as well. And then in the hill country, in the higher elevations, we're seeing some downpours at the moment. Not really seeing much around the Alamo City, but up toward uh, Kerrville and Comfort, seeing some decent heavier rain up toward Comfort and Center Point as well. So you're about to get the quick splash and dash showers. We're going to be dodging these downpours all day long. Uh, in fact, I'll take you through the future cast here and you can see what I mean. It, it's not going to be necessarily widespread. Not every single person is going to get rain, but we're going to just have to dodge these showers and some of the rain could be heavy at times with up to about an inch to an inch and a half of rain possible by Tuesday for many places with these downpours that occur today, maybe a quick quarter inch, maybe a quick inch. But because of all of the cloudiness and the potential for rain, we're really only going to see high temperatures today in the low 80s, uh, 80 for the high in Stone Oak, 83 around downtown San Antonio, 82 at Lackland up in the hill country it could stay in the 70s all day could be only up to about 77, 78 degrees from Bernie to Leon Springs. And the potential for rain today is about 40% for scattered showers. And yes, you may hear a rumble of thunder or two, but we are not expecting severe weather from today's rainfall. So don't we don't have to worry about that, which is pretty good news. East winds up 5 to 15 miles per hour and then We'll do it again tomorrow because that low pressure system is going to meander around Texas over the next few days. And so we're not really going to see a huge let up from the chance for scattered showers or storms until that low heads out of here. And it's not really going to do that until about Wednesday. That's when it'll start to move off to the north. So scattered showers and a few storms possible today, tomorrow and Tuesday. By Wednesday, it'll become more isolated. And at the end of the week, it'll just be downright hot and humid as we start off June. Uh, very interesting. Now coming up, I'll have a look in the Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche. We do have something that is showing that we could have a little bit more tropical moisture. Of course, hurricane season starts in June. Max, Stephanie? We'll watch out for that. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 616, 72 degrees out. Next on GMSA, we're going to introduce you to the valedictorian at Brackenridge High School and why she's looking to be the next Bill Gates. That's next in our great graduate series. Welcome back. Well, in the midst of this pandemic, the school year has been challenging to say the least for so many students, especially graduating seniors. But here at KSET, we are shining a spotlight on these graduating seniors in our great graduate series. This week, we're introducing you to Natalie Castillo, who is the valedictorian at Brackenridge High School and is looking to be the next Bill Gates. I'm excited for the fall. Hopefully, I'll be able to be in Austin in the fall because 
current situation. Natalie Castillo is looking forward to attending the University of Texas at Austin, and she's pursuing a degree in management information systems. Um, I'd say the three top people I look up to would be uh, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and Sergey Brin, he's the co-founder of Google. I look up to them because like they're accomplishing like what I want to accomplish in life. Like I want to be able to innovate and change the way we live. Like Google like changed the face of like the internet as we know it. Natalie's dream is to follow in their footsteps by starting her own technology company, but she would also like to pave the way for other women. I think it's pretty known that women haven't been represented in like these fields and like high positions and like high amount of influence like these individuals have. And I wanna change that, I wanna break those glass ceilings, not just for myself, but like for people who come after me. Natalie has been busy with Cheer, the Academic Decathlon, DECA, and she's been involved with Cyber Patriot, which is a cybersecurity competition. She's a valedictorian of her class at Brackenridge, and because she's enrolled in the early college program, she will also be graduating with her associates. She's a good communicator, and she's well respected, but she is mostly the student that you see that's truly intrinsic wanting to learn, and I think that separates her from her peers. And congratulations, Natalie. Super impressed with her. I hope when she builds her tech company that it'll be here in San Antonio. Yes, congratulations, Natalie. Congratulations, class of 2020. Are you just on the uh, the Longhorns beat now? I feel like every great <laughs> like, Hook them horns, Natalie. <laughs> it was coincidence. <laughs> but we are congratulating you. Congratulations. Yes. 622, 72 degrees out. And next on GMSA, what this academy has done to help students that lack reading resources. But first, taking a look at birthdays today, Carlos, 92 years young. Happy birthday, Carlos. Yes, 92 years young. Happy birthday. And happy birthday to Evelyn. Cute. Five years old. Enjoy your fifth birthday. Now keep sending your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. Good morning and happy Sunday. Throughout this pandemic, we have seen people and organizations step up and help out. We see drives to help those who are hungry, but what about those minds that are hungry for knowledge? Well, Promesa Academy over on the west side conducted its second book giveaway yesterday, and they distributed more than 250 children's books earlier this month. They planned to reach 300 to 500 children. The Academy is in the 78207 zip code, and that's where the school says about half the students in the community lack reading resources, which would impact graduation rates down the line. And I'm glad to see some fun books out there that helps to get uh, children motivated to read. Absolutely. During these times, during the pandemic, yes. during the aftermath of everything, it is so nice to have a good story, see people step up and help out. Yes. Thank you so much, Promessa Academy. Thank you. 626, 72 degrees out. And we saw peaceful protests across the state turn violent. Even here in San Antonio, we're going to have the mayor's response. Good morning and welcome back. 6.30 this Sunday morning, May 31st. Thanks for joining us this morning and a little humid, so a little different than yesterday morning. A little bit humid and Sarah already told us we are talking tropics this morning. So Sarah, what do you got for us? Yeah, I'm briefly going to talk about the tropics here because Atlantic hurricane season starts tomorrow and right on the money we have some sort of development uh, across parts of the uh, Bay of Compache and that will have the opportunity to develop only about 30% chance over the next five days. We'll keep our eye on it, but I did just want to uh, put that on your radar uh, to know that we're going to be keeping an eye on it. Today, however, we will continue to be seeing rainfall around San Antonio in the form of scattered downpours. In fact, we've already got some rain on the radar early this morning. In Southern Kenny County, south of Brackettville, you can see some moderate rain showers there. Around Del Rio, some light to moderate rain showers there as well, just on the border and then up in the hill country some heavier rain for parts of southern Kerr County uh, and near comfort as well. Notice no flashes of lightning here. We're not expecting severe weather today, but we will continue to see the opportunity for scattered downpours. So we're going to have to dodge some rain today. Waking up this morning in the 70s, it's muggy outside 72 degrees at the airport, 70 at Stinson, 63 in Comfort and 63 in Kerrville. In today's forecast, about a 40% chance for scattered showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder here, but again and there, but again, 
reminder, not expecting severe weather. A high temperature today only in the low to mid 80s because of the extra cloud cover and the potential for rain. Now coming up, we'll see how, just how long this rain is going to last. Looks like it's going to stay in the forecast for a little bit. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, sir. New this morning, businesses sit shattered, roads blocked off, and now a curfew is in place. This is what's left over after last night's protests turned chaotic. This is video from our Sky 12 of last night's situation. SAPD's Chief William McManus says three officers injured as police tried to get crowds under control. He also says three people were arrested, but at this time, there's not a clear answer for what exactly they were arrested for. And San Antonio's downtown district this morning under close police surveillance, the city issuing a curfew and declaring a local disaster. Last night's protest began peacefully, but within hours it escalated and dozens of businesses were vandalized downtown. Our Alicia Berrera is live on Commerce Street, where this morning police are having to ask employees to go back home. Good morning. Well, one of the businesses that was really affected where we see a lot of damage is Waterburger. Here you can see some of the windows boarded up already. Caution tape surrounding this entire area, making sure that people don't get too close. Um, we saw a video of people inside. That was last night. But this morning there is there are police officers here guarding this front. We'll move around to the side so we can see a little bit more of the damage um, this morning. But employees, I spoke to two of them, and they're obviously not able to come to work this morning uh, because of the damage. They're being told that perhaps by tomorrow when these windows are fixed, that they'll be able to come back. So again, this is just some of the damage that we're seeing this morning. Um, a lot of security here. Um, and across downtown, on your screen, you'll also see some of the damage seen around the area. According to police, the bulk of it can be seen along Commerce, Broadway, La Soya, Houston, and Alamo streets. Businesses' windows are also busted in those areas, walls tagged with paint. And the torch statue just up the street from where we're standing on Commerce and Alamo has also has graffiti on it. City leaders say they know tensions are high, but want to help keep the peace, which is why they've issued that curfew. And so we are working to make sure that we prevent uh, the loss of life and also prevent any additional criminal behavior that would lose uh, property and prevent uh, uh, or uh, jeopardize the safety of our neighbors. During this temporary curfew, no one can travel on public street. Any violators could face a misdemeanor and be punished with a fine of up to $1,000 and up to 180 days in jail. And just to be clear, that curfew started at 1130 last night. It ended this morning at 6 a.m., but it will kick back into effect tonight at 10 p.m. and be effective until tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. But I also want to show you what some business leaders did last night to try to prevent damage. One of those businesses could Jody Ugly, what we see here is that they boarded up their doors and their windows again to prevent any damage. And San Antonio, let me tell you, they're once again coming together because we know that several groups are going to be meeting this morning. One at Travis Park. If you want to help clean up some of this damage that we're seeing here, one group is meeting today at Travis Park at 9 a.m. Another one here at the Torch Statue. It's not clear what time, but we know again it'll be this morning. Reporting live downtown, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Clearly not the downtown we're used to seeing on a Sunday morning. We did have team coverage on the ground when the protest began peacefully and on the ground in the aftermath when that violence erupted. Our Jaffney Gray was there and she gives us a look at what she experienced last night into the early morning hours. Here at the intersection of Commerce and Bowie, this is just one of the many places the San Antonio police had to gain control over chaos that erupted downtown near the River Center Mall. Earlier today was the exact opposite of what went down here. Peaceful protests in honor of George Floyd filled Travis Park. That protest peacefully made its way to the police headquarters. This evening, it all shifted after unruly people got out of hand at the Alamo. And we're hearing once police gained control there, those people made their way downtown where they began breaking windows of the mall, painting graffiti on walls and throwing large rocks at officers. A large police presence stepped in and we're even hearing tear gas was deployed at one time. Eventually, officers did gain control over all of that destruction happening downtown, keeping our buildings safe and trying to regain the peace of San Antonio. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News.
And San Antonio, not the only Texas city dealing with damage from overnight mayhem. Scenes like ours and even worse stretching across the rest of the state. Now, this is a scene in Houston. Take a look. Protesters marched from Emancipation Park to police headquarters seeking justice for George Floyd, who was a Houston native. Now, Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo says his police had to form a blockade to prevent protesters from getting on highways where they may get hurt. Now, we've also seen video of what appears to be a mounted police officer knocking down a woman involved in the protest there. In a tweet, Houston Police says that right now they are reviewing that incident. This is a look at the crowds outside Austin Police Headquarters. Protesters there confronting a police barricade while chanting and raising signs, many of which also reference the police-related death of Mike Ramos there in Austin. Crowds also heading on to I-35 as well. Both directions were shut down as protesters took to the highway. The demonstration caused major delays. And this is a scene in Dallas last night. Protesters there blocked the interstate and we are told at least one officer suffered some injuries. Dallas police used pepper spray and tear gas to disperse the crowds. Scenes of chaos and violence across America. Angry protesters looting and burning stores, frequently clashing with police and ignoring curfews and pleas for calm. Now, at least one person was killed during the protests in Indianapolis. All of this coming in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Also breaking overnight, Target the store announcing that it's closing 175 locations in 13 different states because of these protests. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the details. Fury and frustration on full display in the wake of the death of George Floyd. Demonstrations erupting into chaos across much of the nation. Overnight curfews affected in more than two dozen cities, including Minneapolis, where Floyd, an unarmed black man, died at the hands of a former police officer. The National Guard mobilized in at least 13 states in Washington, D.C., including in Minnesota for the first time in more than a century. Police in Minneapolis confronting protesters out after curfew firing tear gas into a group of marchers. On the streets of New York City, tension and violence. Protesters and police clashing in Brooklyn. This police car set ablaze. We appreciate and respect all peaceful protest, but now it is time for people to go home. Earlier Saturday, after witnessing the launch of a SpaceX rocket in Florida, President Trump denouncing the violence. I stand before you as a friend and ally to every American seeking justice and peace. And I stand before you in firm opposition to anyone exploiting this tragedy to loot, rob, attack, and menace. Healing, not hatred, justice, not chaos, are the mission at hand. Later, while the president was inside the White House, several hundred protesters gathering outside, chanting. In Salt Lake City, Utah, the National Guard deployed after projectiles were thrown at police in confrontational exchanges. At least four officers injured in Ferguson, Missouri overnight during protests. The death of Michael Brown, an African-American teenager killed by a white police officer, inciting nationwide protests six years ago. And in Los Angeles, California, the National Guard deployed overnight after wide-scale fires and looting. The chaos all stemming from this disturbing video showing Derek Chauvin pushing his knee into Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes. Please! Please, I can't breathe! Chauvin now charged with third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter. Three other officers involved in the arrest still under investigation. Meanwhile, Mayor Sylvester Turner saying Floyd's body will be returned to his native Houston. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. And remember, we are still in the midst of this pandemic. Before the protest last night, local leaders announced the latest number of confirmed coronavirus cases here in Bear County. 189 new cases were reported, many still under investigation. But here's the thing. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says that the influx of these new cases had to do in part because of backlogs of tests all the way going to mid-May. Now, the total of COVID-19 cases, at least the confirmed ones in our community, sit at 2,825. Of those cases, 1,420 people have recovered. Still, though, 1,332 people fighting the disease, 83 people still in the hospital. Another death was reported yesterday, bringing the total now to 73. And time now, 641, 72 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, the Dalai Lama is giving an insight on how he's been doing during quarantine. 
And we know that we have seen and heard a lot of weather this past week, so if you're wondering how many lightning strikes we had during the storms, well, we have the answer. We have all those numbers right here on GMSA. That's next. Nice pictures. And taking a look outside with live cam, not looking like that right now, but we are expecting some rain. We're going to check in with Sarah after the break. Stay with us. Good morning and a welcome back. A crazy number to tell you, 11 thousand cps energy says just this past week week this past week storms brought more than 11,000 lightning strikes from may 24th to may 28th the national weather service issued 88 severe thunderstorm warnings 10 tornado warnings and 10 flash flood warnings one tornado was confirmed in the wild horse subdivision on sunday night now the most lightning came on memorial day with nearly 6,000 strikes recorded all right it should be noted that the 88 severe thunderstorm warnings for the entire KSAT 12 viewing area, not just simply for Bear County itself. Oh, are we expecting anything like this this coming week? No severe weather today, so that's good news, and probably no severe weather in the week ahead as well, just because of the nature of the showers and a few thunderstorms that we're going to see. Temperatures outside right now, pretty mild, 72 degrees at the airport, 72 in New Braunfels, 70 in Hondo. It's in the 60s in the hill country right now. Our weather setup, though, I do want to talk about why we're not going to be experiencing severe weather. We have this low pressure system over Mexico that's going to be swinging around tropical energy uh, and you can see in the Gulf of Mexico there some of those showers that are developing out there. Whenever we have uh, the source of energy coming from the tropics, severe weather is not a concern. When I say severe weather, I mean hail and tornadoes, uh, generally not a concern. And the reason for that is uh, just because of the way the atmosphere is set up. We will not have to worry about severe weather today, but we will have to dodge some downpours. We're seeing some of those downpours right now on the radar. And from Del Rio to Yavaldi, some light to moderate rain showers out there at the moment, uh, and especially near Brackettville. But up in the hill country, I want to focus for a moment just south of Hunt. You can see the flashes of lightning that occur there across 39. So if you're in Kerr County, you may be hearing some thunder. Uh, now, light Lightning is going to be possible today. Thunder is going to be possible today, but hail uh, likely not a concern for us as well as damaging wind gusts. We're not going to be too worried about it. I do want to show you the precipitation rate with some of these showers and storms that are ongoing could drop a quick half an inch of rain in some places just because uh, they're not moving too quickly, uh, but Rainfall rates of about an inch to an inch and a half to two inches an hour are possible. And so they could quickly drop a few uh, hundredths of an inch of rainfall. That's the kind of rain that we're going to be dealing with today. But as we get daytime heating, it'll be a little bit more widespread. That's why we'll have 40 to 60 percent chance for scattered showers and a few storms out there. Generally cloudy today. And because of the rain cool there, our high temperatures will likely only be in the low to mid 80s around San Antonio up in the hill country, potentially only staying in the 70s. And I would like to note too that if you do get a brief rain shower, your temp will probably drop quite a bit. So for Sunday's forecast, about a 40 to 60 percent chance for scattered showers, 83 for the high east winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. And that pesky low, it's going to meander around Texas throughout the start of the week. So we'll have a chance for scattered showers and storms not only today, but through the middle of the week. So potentially we could see in another additional inch to an inch and a half of rain in some places on top of the nearly six inches of rain that we have seen for the month of May. By the end of the week, hot and humid. Max, Stephanie. Back to what we're used to. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 648, 72 degrees out. And next on GMSA, the Dalai Lama sharing his experience with COVID-19 and how he's doing during quarantine. And welcome back at 651 this morning. We're hearing from the Dalai Lama and it couldn't come at a better time as so many people are stressed out and anxious. Well, the Dalai Lama is locking himself in the Himalayas in India, locked down in his headquarters. He says he is spending four to five hours a day meditating and then a few hours watching the news. Maybe he's watching KSAT. Who knows <laughs> when it comes to reducing anxiety and fear during this pandemic? He says compassion is the key. Selfish. Think just yourself is narrow, foolish, short-sighted. So altruism is the ultimate source of happiness. 
And when asked what kind of videos he likes to watch, he didn't say K-Set. He says he likes ones about animals and nature, especially ones with deer, because he says they are so peaceful. He didn't not say K-Set. <laughs> Max. Celebrity Chrissy Teigen donating $200,000 to post bail for those who were protesting. The model and cookbook author says mockingly she's contributing to MAGA Night. Now, President Donald Trump says on Twitter it's happening at the White House next Saturday. Tegan was initially going to give half as much. Then a Twitter user called protesters, quote, rioters and criminals, end quote. And she doubled her pledge. Time now, 6.53, 72 degrees out. We'll be right back. Some businesses in downtown were able to escape some of the damage seen this morning, like Coyote Ugly. They were able to board up their windows, their doors, to make sure that they didn't experience any damage because of the protests that got out of hand last night here in San Antonio. Over here across the street, this Waterburger on Commerce is another one of the areas that was very much affected. This morning, employees asked to go back home as they won't be allowed in, windows busted a lot of damage inside uh, the police officers that are here guarding this entrance telling them that perhaps tomorrow they'll be able to come back but the big factor that they're waiting on of course those windows to be replaced and across downtown more businesses being affected by the protest. A big bulk of it can be seen along Commerce, Broadway, Los Oya, Houston, and Alamo streets. Businesses' windows are also busted in those areas, as well as walls tagged with paint. Also, the torch statue just up the street from where we're standing, that also got tagged with some graffiti. And this morning, for anyone wanting to help clean up this mess, we know that a group is meeting at Travis Park today at 9 a.m. to once again clean up. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Our series of Leading SA is coming back. Every weekend we're going to bring you local leaders in a live interview to talk about the issues that matter to you and our community. Now it's going to be every Sunday in the 8 a.m. hour of GMSA. Today we are set to speak with City Manager Eric Walsh in a live interview. And you can participate in these interviews every Sunday. You can send us your questions, anything that you have. You just have to visit our website at KSET.com under the local news tab. For an easier access, you can type in Leading SA in the search bar. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the angry protests in the wake of the death of George Floyd escalate across the country. The anger and the demands for change, the descent in some places into violence and destruction. We are covering it all right here. Plus the White House reacting President Trump taunting protesters in a series of tweets while outside demonstrators take to the streets of D.C. And finally, all of this, of course, taking place against the backdrop of the pandemic. All 50 states now loosening restrictions, but worldwide cases of the coronavirus reach a grim milestone. This is all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. Well, we are seeing some showers on the radar right now, even a few rumbles of thunder, uh, some showers out toward Del Rio, but toward Kerrville, that's where we do have a few flashes of lightning in southern Kerr County, pushing off into western Kerr County. This kind of scattered rainfall is going to become uh, more widespread during the day uh, and will have carry about a 40 to 60% chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms. East winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. And because of the added cloud cover today and the potential for some rain, our highs will likely only be in the low to mid 80s. Not only will we have scattered rain today, but we'll also have scattered showers tomorrow and again on Tuesday. A little bit of an active weather pattern as we start uh, June. But the good news is, is we're not concerned with severe weather with these showers and storms that will be going on through Tuesday. As for the end of the week, clearing out and it'll just be hot and humid. Highs will be in the 90s. So guys, coming up at 8 in an hour, I'm, I'm going to do my best to continue to show you radar, where those showers are, and um, how long they'll last. Thank you, Sarah. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. And yeah, we are going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America, but we still have a lot to unfold this morning. A lot happened here in the Alamo City overnight, and we are going to be having a live interview. We're set to have a live interview with Eric Walsh, the city manager, talk about that press conference he gave at midnight, how we can move forward, and what exactly happened yesterday. If you have any questions for Eric Walsh, you can send them into our website at kset.com. Just look under the local news tab. We'll be back in an hour. 
called at a press conference. He ended up not taking questions, and he walked out without at all addressing what was happening around the country or let alone in Minneapolis. Um, he has called these protesters mobs and, and thugs. And you'll go back a little bit. Remember Charlottesville? He said there were very fine people on both sides when we were talking about neo-Nazi protesters there. Um, Dan, what we have seen time and time again uh, from this president is that uh, when we are talking about moments of civil unrest in this country, particularly in fact, we're already seeing rain on the radar uh, out toward Kerr County right now. A few flashes of lightning south of Kerrville, Ingram Hunt area, seeing some downpours. But around San Antonio, it's generally quiet at the moment. That will likely change as we get further into the day. Uh, we'll see clouds increase and a chance for scattered showers and storms. No severe weather expected today, which is the good news. And high temperatures will be much cooler because of the clouds and rain. Hello, I'm Max Massey. This morning, emotions are raw. Some businesses in downtown San Antonio in shambles. We know officers injured and multiple people have been arrested. All of this comes after peaceful protests turned chaotic. This was the scene last night downtown. Windows shattered, graffiti sprayed around the area, and now there's a curfew in place on GMSA at 8 a.m. We go through all we know this morning, and we speak to the city manager live. Sarah? Thank you, Max. Yeah, we are going to be seeing rain throughout the day, dodging some showers. Uh, and in fact, we're already seeing some rain on the radar down near Catula, out toward Del Rio and in Kenny County, and especially in Kerrville and in Kerr County right now. Some heavy downpours, even some flashes of lightning. But the good news is we are not expecting severe weather today. We'll carry about a 40 to 60 percent chance for showers and a few rumbles of thunder. As a result of the cloud cover and the potential for rain, our high temperatures today are only going to be in the low 80s will carry rain into tomorrow as well. We'll be watching that disturbance as well to see if it'll impact San Antonio. But today we're going to have areas of scattered rain uh, and as a result, highs are going to be a little bit cooler. 40% chance for rain, a high near 83. This weather report sponsored by Walgreens. Tomorrow officially the beginning of Hurricane City is hurricane season. But we've already had two named storms. Hopefully that's not uh, an omen of things to come. Guys, back down to you. Yeah, I think that's the last thing that yes. this country needs right yeah. now. Rob, thank you so yeah. much. We appreciate it. Still ahead here on Good Morning America, the latest on the coronavirus pandemic as the world. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And they need to be reminded that this is our city, too. Right now on GMSA at 8 a.m., strong emotions this morning, storefronts damaged, multiple arrests, and reports of injuries. We have the latest on last night's protests here in the Alamo City. Plus, after last night's protest over the death of George Floyd got out of hand this morning, civilians and city employees are left cleaning up the mess. Just ahead on GMSA, the images of San Antonio coming together. It is a different sort of morning here in the Alamo City after a night that was filled with mayhem downtown. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Serna. It is Sunday, May 31st. Chief William McManus referred to those causing that destruction as agitators. This morning, employees are looking at the damage left behind. Dozens of businesses suffering damage and people all around our community, as well as city employees stepping up and trying to clean up. Alicia Brera live from one of the most affected areas in the city, Houston Street near Alamo. Alicia. Good morning. Well, right now we're standing again, Houston Street, 500 block, literally a block away from the Alamo. And this is some of the damage that we're seeing. This is a jewelry store here on Houston Street. We spoke to one lady who we who we saw standing next to this plywood. She said that she saw a post on Facebook and wanted to come at least donate this piece of plywood. She wasn't able to uh, put it up correctly, but she's at least leaving it to uh, provide some type of protection across the street from where I'm standing. This group of civilians civilians is helping clean up the damage done at that boutique and they literally just arrived here about a minute or so ago and that's what we're seeing all throughout downtown over here this business it was rocket fizz right now it says it's for lease the people inside over here also they don't have any relationship with the owners with the people leasing here they've simply stopped they drove by and saw the damage that was here and this floor was covered in glass so throughout san antonio this is what we've seen because of the amount of damage some are having to work this this Sunday morning. I spoke to some employees for Centro San Antonio. 
You've probably seen them around. They usually have the yellow or orange vest. They work with the city and they've been walking and driving around to assess the damage and clean up in the heart of downtown near the Red Torch statue and throughout the area. The big pots that you may see with the flowers, well, all of those were shattered and employees are having to clean up. And let me tell you, it is pretty heavy. We saw them even having to break up the big pieces. A lot of the pots around uh, surrounding aligning the river walk, those are also missing or shattered. And we want to talk about the temporary curfew because of all this damage that we're seeing. Well, the city wants to prevent that from happening again, and they want to help keep the people who live here in downtown and the businesses safe. So that temporary curfew will go into effect again tonight. So a little earlier than last night and will remain in effect until 6 a.m. Monday morning. But right now this cleanup continues and we do plan to make our way over to Travis Park where another group of people plan to help clean up. Reporting live downtown, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Remember, all this started as a peaceful protest and then it escalated throughout the night. The death of George Floyd in Minneapolis striking a chord with many here at home who are calling for change. As Tiffany Huertas reports, the turn of events overnight led to tear gas, injured officers, and like Alicia was saying, a new curfew. Large crowds of protesters took to the streets of downtown San Antonio Saturday, gathering near the Alamo. Accountability for police brutality. Following the death of George Floyd, a white officer in Minneapolis placing his knee on Floyd's neck before he lost consciousness and died. The peaceful protests in the Alamo City took a turn in the evening. Windows were broken, spray paint covered buildings, and other property was damaged downtown. Throwing rocks and bottles at cars. Three officers were also injured as police tried to get crowds under control. We did throw gas. Uh, we, when it was time to disperse, we gave the appropriate orders. Uh, gave them a chance to disperse, gave them a place to disperse to. Uh, and when they didn't do it within the time frame, we, uh, we fired pepper balls. Uh, and broke the crowds up that way. And in response to these protests and to the riots, Governor Greg Abbott sending state resources to cities like Houston, Dallas, Austin, and here in San Antonio, all in an effort to maintain the public safety. Then the governor says DPS has sent more than 1,500 officers to assist all local police departments in the three cities and that more resources will be provided as needed. In a press release, the governor says, quote, Texas and America mourn the senseless loss of George Floyd and the actions that led to his death are reprehensible and should be condemned in the strongest terms possible as Texans exercise their First Amendment rights. It is imperative that order is maintained and private property is protected, end quote. And turning to weather, it has been uh, 73 degrees right now, a little humid. Yeah, we're going to talk about the weather for just a moment here, and I want to talk about the potential for rain today. We're already seeing some rain on the radar south of Valley and out toward Del Rio, seeing some showers there and in Kerr County at the moment. Showers in Del Rio, moderate rain showers, and even a few flashes of lightning earlier in Kerr County. Here in San Antonio, it's relatively quiet at the moment, uh, but you can see that clouds are starting to increase from the south and from the east, all because of a disturbance that's going to be ushering in some tropical moisture and giving us the opportunity for scattered showers and storms, especially during the second part of the day. It's 73 right now in San Antonio, but let's take you through the day planner. We'll see those clouds increase 40 to 60% chance for showers during the second part of the day and High temperature is going to be a little cooler today, around about 83 degrees for the afternoon high. East winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now coming up, I'm going to have a summary of whether or not you should do some yard work and when it is safe to do some yard work because we do have rain chances in the forecast. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Well, Leading SA is a segment here on KSAT where we speak to leaders of our community. We talk about the issues that we see and the issues you see and what our leaders are doing to address those issues. Today we are joined live by San Antonio City Manager Eric Walsh. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. And good morning. Good morning. Right off the bat, you, the mayor, and the police chief held a midnight press conference after the protest turned chaotic. What do you want the community to take away from last night? Well, Stephanie, thanks for inviting me on this morning. Um, you know, last night was um, um, 
uh, a series of destructive events uh, that was um, uh, really done by a, a small group of individuals. Um, and I don't mean in terms of numbers. We had over 5,000 people downtown last night, uh, and we had a peaceful demonstration. And the organizers of that uh, of that uh, march uh, did exactly what they said they were going to do. Um, but but as night started to fall, uh, I'd say there was a different element that came out um, and was intent on on um, on being destructive to uh, our own downtown city. And um, and and they were successful. I think the police department did a very good job of restraining. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, it was disappointing to see uh, as a San Antonian, uh, but but um, uh, I think I think we're prepared, and we'll as as you said at the top of the hour of this, this broadcast, we're out there already cleaning up um, because it's important to uh, quickly do that. There is now a curfew in place. Can you explain the reasoning behind the curfew and how you plan to enforce it? So uh, y yes, the the uh, mayor um, implemented a curfew last night, uh, beginning at 11:30 to 6 a.m. this morning. We've also got it in place uh, for tonight, from 10 p.m. to 6 o'clock Monday morning. Uh, the idea is to give the uh, police department an additional tool to be able to uh, ensure that folks are not out on the streets uh, within the central business district, um, and if they, uh, at the officer's discretion can utilize that curfew to uh, either arrest or move folks along. I do want to point out that that the curfew uh, does have uh, provisions in it to accommodate for folks that are going to work or 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 have official business. Um, uh, the, the chief said last night at the press conference, uh, the idea isn't, isn't that they were that they're stopping everybody, but they do want to keep the streets clear uh, this evening. And Eric, is there anything planned for this evening? You know, not not officially. Um, I think uh, the police department and others will will continue to monitor it. Um, as we've seen across uh, uh, the country and other cities, uh, these uh, uh, last night's events have rippled through the last three nights. And so uh, we haven't heard of anything official, but uh, the police department will be out there uh, again tonight uh, and late this afternoon to uh, to uh, uh, ensure that that doesn't happen again. All of these protests happening in the midst of the pandemic. Since the start of the coronavirus, more than 40 million Americans filing for unemployment. How is San Antonio's economy, how are they feeling these effects? You know, uh, we've had uh, probably over 100,000 San Antonio residents who claimed uh, unemployment um, and, and uh, our unemployment rate locally is about 12 and a half percent. So it's been devastating. Um, uh, a number of our specific sectors have been really severely impacted, such as uh, uh, retail trade, uh, restaurants, uh, a lot of the downtown hotels. Um, and I think uh, I think uh, part of that is uh, the impact, obviously, that we've all experienced over the last two and a half months. Um, but but a lot of over 100,000 folks out of uh, San Antonio who have filed for unemployment, 12 and a half percent is a lot, right? And with that 12 and a half percent, how is the city working with the state and federal government to help our community? So, you know, we've been working really closely with the state um, all the way back to the beginning of February when um, um, repatriated Americans started coming back to Lackland. Um, you know, I, you know, I see the, the connection that we've got with the governor's office and the state in particular as being helpful. Uh, to um, help us accomplish a couple of things. One, setting up that testing site out at Freeman, um, the nursing home test. And I think uh, y'all heard last night that the mayor's briefing, we have completed, the San Antonio Fire Department has completed uh, testing every nursing home resident and employee over the last two weeks, which was really important for us to do locally. Uh, uh, that was under a governor's order. I think we were one of the first big cities to accomplish that. Those congregate settings are, um, are are we're finding potential hotspots for COVID, and and then you know I think the other the other part that we work well with the, the governor's office is in uh, aligning our emergency orders. Every every time the every time the, the mayor I'm sorry every time the governor 
uh, uh, issues an emergency order, uh, the mayor and the judge have uh, adjusted our local orders uh, so that it's a kind of a hand in glove and a very consistent approach for everyone. So that's been helpful. Fantastic. City Manager Eric Walsh, thank you so much for joining us. We know that you were out and about late last night. You had that midnight press conference, so we really appreciate you joining us early this morning. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Max. Thanks, guys. All right, time now, 812, 73 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, getting a free sweet treat all week long. We're going to tell you how and where. Plus, getting a look at history in the making. Coming up, a recap of the SpaceX launch this weekend, just in case you missed it. And taking a look outside with live cam, nice and humid at 73 degrees. Not raining right now, at least not here downtown, but uh, we'll probably see some showers later on. We're gonna check in with Sarah to see what we can expect today and for the rest of your week. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 816. Another chapter hit the books in the history of space exploration. SpaceX's second attempt to launch two NASA astronauts on a mission to the International Space Station was successful. It was a big success. Not only was this historical in terms of commercialized space travel, but it was also the first launch of astronauts from the United States in nine years. In case you missed it, here it is. Veteran astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley lifting off from the legendary launch pad 39A in Florida. Elon Musk SpaceX has now joined the ranks of governments becoming the first commercial company in history to put humans in orbit. After that 19 hour journey, the next major milestone docking the International Space Station. There you go. So if it does become mainstream, you guys want to go to Mars? <laughs> I <good>. don't. <laughs> One thing that was impressive to me as I was watching it was seeing the control panel of the astronauts, how streamlined it was. Yes. It almost seemed like I could operate it. I probably could. <laughs> but it was that streamlined. It, it, it looked really, really neat. And uh, this is all very exciting. Now, before the break, I promised I would give you a yard work forecast, whether or not you should do uh, yard work or mowing the grass or cutting weeds. and. It's not going to look great over the next few days. And the reason for that is we're going to have the opportunity for for rain just about every day through Tuesday, scattered rain. And then after that, we'll be OK. But scattered rain is in the forecast through the middle of the week. Showing you the satellite radar right now, I want to show you our weather setup. While it's quiet across the northern tier of Texas, notice all of the uh, swirling and rain across uh, parts of the Gulf of Mexico, all around a low pressure system that is bringing in bouts of tropical moisture from the Gulf of Mexico itself. And this is going to mean around today and provide us with the opportunity for some scattered downpours. In fact, we're already seeing some rain on the radar, mainly west and north of San Antonio. Out toward Del Rio right now, some moderate rain at times, also in eastern Kenny, uh, western Kenny County. And then up in the hill country, we've seen some showers from Comfort all the way up to Kerrville. And right now we're seeing some light to moderate rain near Hunt right across 39. That's what we've got on the radar so far, but look down to the south and to the east toward Corpus Christi and the Gulf of Mexico. Notice how it's starting to light up a little bit. This piece of energy is going to swing our way and we'll see our rain chances increase mainly during the second part of the day. Some scattered showers and storms will be possible. We're going to go about 40% chance for scattered showers and storms. Until then, though, it's going to be fairly cloudy. Clouds are on the increase right now and afternoon highs will likely be in the low to mid 80s just about everywhere you look, except for in the hill country where it could stay in the 70s all day long. So again, about 40% chance for scattered showers and storms and it'll be more cloudy in the afternoon. East winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Highs in the low to mid 90s. That low is going to kind of meander around over the next few days and that's why we're going to keep a chance for scattered showers and storms in the forecast pretty much every day through Tuesday. By Wednesday, that low will be moving to the north, and so we'll start to taper off those low chance, those uh, chances for showers and storms. And then it'll just be hot and humid with highs back into the 90s and high humidity. Now, while we will see a break from the rain by the end of the week, I do want to talk a little bit more about the potential for some tropical development uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. It is 
our hurricane season starts tomorrow and lasts through the end of November. So we've got a lot to talk about. Again, not everybody will see some showers today, but we will have that potential for scattered showers. No severe weather expected. Max, Stephanie. Well, good news on no severe weather expected. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 820, 73 degrees out. And calling all donut fans. Hint, hint, my daughter. Up next on GMSA, we're going to tell you where you can get the free treat all week long to celebrate National Donut Day. And welcome back. It is 824. If you're a fan of donuts, well, we have good news. Fan? Love donuts. Who doesn't <laughs> love donuts? I will say, much more of a breakfast taco kind of guy. Right. But if someone too. puts donuts in the newsroom, mm -hmm. they're gone. Yeah. Well. The, the snack spot used to be designated like near my desk. But if they're free, it's even better. It's true. And <laughs> good news if you're a donut fan, Krispy Kreme offering free donuts from next week. Celebration in honor of National Donut Day. Very appropriate. So right now on KSET.com, we have a list of the participating locations here in San Antonio. They're going to offer one free donut per customer per day. And the offer is not valid for delivery. Mm. So you can't be super lazy and have them delivered to you. You actually have to go out and yeah, get them. Yeah, well, that's part of the fun. It's like it's like getting out. So what's funny to me about donuts, my, my little girl, I, I thought something was wrong with her when she was younger. Mm -hmm. She just wouldn't touch a donut. She was just like, hey, whatever. We'd offer her one and she'd just leave it there. But I know your husband, Luis, loves donuts. Yes, yes. And, and so that's why I was like, oh, this is surprising. I was like, oh, maybe she's healthy. But nope, she has turned around. She. <laughs> Good to hear. She, she loves donuts at six years old. <laughs> All right, time now, 825, 73 degrees out. And coming up in our next half hour, the protest now reaching the president's doorstep. We're going to have a look at how last night unfolded at the Capitol. And we continue to show the aftermath here in San Antonio. Businesses dealing with damage this morning. That's after peaceful protests turned chaotic overnight. We have all the details next on GMSA. Good morning and welcome back. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. It's Sunday, May 31st. Just last week, we saw a lot of storms mm -hmm. and, well, Might Sarah, see some more. <laughs> yeah, we might see some more, but we're also starting to enter hurricane season, aren't we? We are. Tomorrow is the official start of the Atlantic hurricane season, but I do want to talk about something that's starting to bubble up in the tropics. This is Tropical Storm Amanda, which developed in the Pacific Ocean, and it is about to uh, make landfall uh, across areas in Guatemala and southern Mexico. Uh, now, the thing that's interesting about Tropical Storm Amanda is that as it falls apart, it'll likely move into the Gulf of Mexico, and the National Hurricane Center has given this a decent chance for, honestly, redevelopment in the next five days, about 50%. If it did that, it would get a completely different name and it would be in the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic Basin. So we'd have to watch out uh, for what impacts, if any impacts, <laughs> anything would have on the state of Texas. We just, it's just too early to know that, but I did want to put that on your radar and let you know that we're keeping an eye on the tropics because again, Atlantic hurricane season begins tomorrow and lasts through the end of November. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, we are seeing some showers uh, start to develop along the KSAT 12 viewing area, mainly to the west and to the north of San Antonio at the moment. Toward Del Rio, we're seeing some light to moderate rainfall there and then up in the hill country just to the west of Hunt seeing some moderate rain showers as well even heard some flashes of lightning and thunder out in Kerr County earlier today right now it's quiet around San Antonio and we are seeing a little bit of sunshine as we're starting off the day but clouds will start to increase from the southeast and we'll be looking at a fairly cloudy afternoon with another opportunity for some downpours 73 degrees right now at the airport 70 in Pleasanton. So like I said, today we'll see those clouds slowly increase 83 degrees for the afternoon high, so not too warm because of the increasing clouds and the opportunity for a few scattered showers, potentially even a few storms. But I do want to stress no severe weather expected today. East winds at 5 to 15. Coming up, we'll have a look at the week ahead. Looks like we're going to continue to see chances for rain. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Just into our newsroom, we now have details about some of the arrests made during last night's mayhem downtown. Several people were arrested and four people now facing serious charges. Some of those charges include engaging in a riot, resisting arrest, 
aggravated assault and unlawful carry of a weapon. All this comes after emotions are still raw this morning. Businesses downtown in shambles. We know officers are injured and multiple people, like we just said, have been arrested. This was a scene last night downtown after those peaceful protests turned chaotic. Windows were shattered, graffiti sprayed around, and people were tear gassed overnight. And like we said, that peaceful protest turned violent. People began to shatter those storefronts downtown, even breaking into some of our local businesses. This morning affected business owners waking up to a lot to clean up, but they're not doing it alone. Our Alicia Barrera live from downtown where community members are stepping up to help. Good morning. Well, we had mentioned that we wanted to make our way over to Travis Park to see how the community was coming together to clean hey guys, um, sections of downtown up. Hello. But the thing is this morning is that what they're doing, they're showing up with those trash bags, with those brooms to start their cleanup process, and they're simply deploying all over. So we haven't seen a big group. Over here on the torch, you see one man already cleaning up that graffiti, all that was sprayed around. And here off of Commerce Street, there's one restaurant that also got hit pretty bad, Sheila. We have Diego Ramos. He's the general manager for this restaurant. Diego, talk to us about the, the damage that you woke up to this morning. Well, we came into uh, a, a couple broken windows, a looted bar. Uh, they broke a pane glass window and made, gained entrance to the restaurant. Uh, they took out a bunch of liquor bottles. They uh, just generally made a mess of the place, broke some of our original windows, which is a shame. It's and you say that's painful because it's it's history. How many years have those windows been there for? Uh, we opened in 1917. Uh, we've been here on Commerce Street since the uh, mid 40s. So it's a shame, but you know, just like you pointed out with the volunteer, you know, people walking around armed with uh, brooms and dustpans and, you know, seeing people just come down walking around cleaning up. It's, it's, you know, says a lot about the character of our city more than the damage that we got last night. Absolutely. Digos, thank you so much for being with thank us you. this morning. And you guys just across the street, we're still seeing some of the cleanup. Um, I'll cross over here, Digo. Um, some of the cleanup happening over here. And again, this is all happening throughout downtown. We were over on Los Oya, Houston Street, and same thing happening there and will continue to happen throughout this morning. And remember that curfew does go into a effect a little earlier tonight and stays in effect until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also happening overnight, police telling us someone broke into the probation office and set it on fire. Police saying this all started around 1230 this morning on Northeast Loop 410. Fortunately, that fire put out quickly by the sprinkler system. It was contained to just one room. Right now, arson investigators called to the scene. We're still waiting to learn the latest on the damages and the latest on that investigation. And this is something our team will be continuously following throughout the day. You can find the latest information involving those protests here in San Antonio right now on our homepage, KSAT.com. But it wasn't just San Antonio. Unrest stretched across the rest of the state this weekend. This was the scene in Houston. Protesters marched from Emancipation Park to police headquarters seeking justice for George Floyd, who was a Houston native. The crowd there so large that the Houston police chief says that his police had to form a blockade to prevent protesters from getting on highways where they may have gotten hurt. We've also seen videos of what appears to be a mounted police officer knocking down a woman involved in the protest there. In a tweet, Houston police says that they are now reviewing that specific incident. Over in Dallas, initially peaceful protests also turned south just before 11 p.m. Dallas police saying 74 people had been arrested in incidents downtown with the largest group, 36 individuals. Now, people on the streets clashed with law enforcement, vandalized property and looted. Another 15 people were taken into custody for vandalizing buildings. Officers also recovered three guns and a taser. Over on Capitol Hill, demonstrations extending to President Donald Trump's doorsteps. Protesters were making their feelings heard loud and clear near the White House. ABC's Rachel Scott joins us from Washington with more. The anger and frustration gripping the nation, spilling over right here into the president's front yard. You can see behind me as some of the crews start to try and clean up some of the debris and graffiti left here overnight. It was chaos in the nation's capital. Demonstrators circling the White House complex, some throwing bricks, rocks, and even fireworks, trying to rip barricades to get even closer. And as those crowds grew, the tensions escalated. The National Guard was activated to help park police 
Parts of D.C. going up in flames. Cars set on fire, some demonstrators vandalizing federal buildings, others looting stores overnight. Many still gathering peacefully, trying to demand justice for George Floyd. And this is normally a section of D.C., Eva, where tourists gather, trying to get a glimpse of the White House. Last night, Secret Service set up these barricades, trying to create a buffer between those demonstrators and the gates of the White House. Some protesters determined to send a clear message to the president and the rest of the nation. One writing on a wall behind me, he was human too. And again, that was Rachel Scott reporting. George Floyd's brother says he actually tried to speak to Donald Trump, but had problems getting a word in when they called. In an interview, Floyd said that he tried to ask the president for justice, but he seemed to want to speak more than he wanted to listen. He also says he spoke with vice presidential uh, a former vice president and current presidential candidate Joe Biden begging him for justice as well. New this morning, families without homes to return to after a fire completely destroyed eight apartments at a complex on the city's northwest side. Firefighters arrived at the Sapphire Apartments in the 8,000 block of Fredericksburg Road just after midnight when they found 16 of those apartment units on fire. The cause still under investigation and we're waiting for the estimate damage and how many people will be displaced. The American Red Cross, though, was called to the scene to help. Meanwhile, we are still in the midst of this pandemic. All San Antonio area nursing homes have been tested. The development comes the same day a delay in testing results came flooding in. As of last night, 189 new cases confirmed coronavirus cases were reported here in Bear County. Many are still under investigation, but Mayor Ron Nuremberg says it had to do in large part to a backlog of tests all the way from mid-May. The results bring in the total of confirmed COVID-19 cases here in the county to 2,825 of those cases. 1,420 people have recovered. Still, though, 1,332 people are fighting the disease. 83 people remain hospitalized. Another death was reported, bringing that total to 73. Also in your latest news, we're getting our first look at the man arrested in connection with recent vandalism at the Alamo Cenotaph. 25-year-old Noah Escamilla is facing a Class B misdemeanor charge for graffiti. San Antonio police say it's unclear if there are others involved in that incident. The graffiti was discovered on the Cenotaph early Friday morning. That message written out in red spray paint seemed to condemn white supremacy, capitalism, and the Alamo itself. Right now, the graffiti is covered while officials figure out the best way to remove the paint without damaging the monument. Time now, 840, 73 degrees up. Still ahead on GMSA, Nevada State Trooper offering comfort during a time of chaos. We're going to share how he approached this family after a car crash. Plus, in our great graduate segment, we continue to shine a spotlight on graduating seniors in and around San Antonio. We are going to introduce you to a local valedictorian who says she wants to be the next Bill Gates. Yes, she does. Wants to start her own company. That's just a hint. And we're taking a look outside with live cam. 73 degrees, a little bit humid, but that's to be expected. Expecting rain also later today. We're going to check in with Sarah to see what we can expect, though, for the rest of your work week. We'll be right back. With school closures in March, this academic school year has been challenging for many students, especially graduating seniors. Here at KSAT, though, we are shining a spotlight on these graduating seniors in our Great Graduate Series. This week, we are introducing you to Natalie Castillo, who is the valedictorian at Brackenridge High School and is looking to be the next Bill Gates. I'm excited for the fall. Hopefully, I'll be able to be in Austin in the fall because current situation. Natalie Castillo is looking forward to attending the University of Texas at Austin, and she's pursuing a degree in management information systems. Um, I'd say the three top people I look up to would be uh, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and Sergey Brin, he's the co-founder of Google. I look up to them because like they're accomplishing like what I want to accomplish in life. Like I want to be able to innovate and change the way we live. Like Google, like change the face of like the internet as we know it. Natalie's dream is to follow in their footsteps by starting her own technology company, but she would also like to pave the way for other women. I think it's pretty known that women haven't been represented in like these fields in like high positions and like high amount of influence like these individuals have. And I want to change that. I want to break those glass ceilings, not just for myself, but like for people who come after me. 
Natalie has been busy with cheer, the academic decathlon, DECA, and she's been involved with Cyber Patriot, which is a cybersecurity competition. She's a valedictorian of her class at Brackenridge, and because she's enrolled in the early college program, she will also be graduating with her associates. She's a good communicator, and she's well respected, but she is mostly the student that you see that's truly intrinsic wanting to learn, and I think that separates her from her peers. Congratulations to Natalie Castillo. We're going to turn to weather right now. It's 73 degrees outside and up in the hill country temperatures are still in the 60s. 65 in Kerrville, 73 in Yavali, 70 in Del Rio, 74 in Catula and 78 in Gonzales. Now for the first part of your Sunday, it should be fairly quiet. But as we head into the afternoon, we're going to start to introduce a chance for some scattered showers. And here's the reason why we've got a low pressure system over Mexico right now and what that is doing is it's uh, directing some tropical moisture into San Antonio and into the KSAT 12 viewing area. Notice in the Gulf of Mexico all of the showers and storms out there. So we are going to see an increase in the opportunity to see some showers and storms. We've even got some on the radar right now, mainly west of San Antonio, north of San Antonio. Let's go ahead and take a look toward Del Rio. You can see the light to moderate rainfall along Highway 90 from Bracket Rail uh, to Del Rio. And again, just some moderate rainfall. There were some flashes of lightning out in Kerr County a while ago, but now we've just got some light to moderate rain along the higher elevations just west of Hunt and west of 39. In San Antonio right now it's quiet, but there is one little shower there in northern Atascosa. County, but notice again, like I said, the shower activity across the Gulf. That's slowly going to be sending in clouds today, so it's going to gradually get cloudier into the afternoon. And then as we head into the afternoon and evening hours, scattered showers are possible. We'll be dodging some downpours. I do want to say severe weather, not likely today very unlikely today and that's good news but you may still hear rumble of thunder or see some lightning with any of these downpours that develop highs today going to be a little bit cooler than average because of the potential for rain and the added cloud cover up in the hill country may struggle to get out of the 70s around san antonio highs in the low to mid 80s and heights in the low to mid 80s just about everywhere you look now for the morning, not a significant chance for rain, but as we head into the afternoon, about 40% chance for scattered showers and storms. East winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour and again a high temperature near 84, 85 in the afternoon. In the future cast for the next several days, this low is just going to kind of meander. And because of that, we're going to we're going to have to keep a chance for some scattered showers and storms in the forecast, not only today, but also tomorrow, Monday, and then again on Tuesday as well. It has been a very healthy May with almost six inches of rainfall for the entire month of May. It came at a cost with some severe weather. But when all is said and done by Tuesday in some places we could see another additional inch to an inch and a half of rainfall beneficial rainfall you know how dry it gets in the summer months for us here in san antonio and so if we can add on to that rain gauge tally you won't hear me complaining. We'll carry a chance for scattered showers through Tuesday, then it'll become a little bit more isolated on Wednesday and then by the end of the week it's just going to be downright hot and humid. Of course, we'll be keeping our eye on the Gulf of Mexico as Atlantic hurricane season starts tomorrow. All Max, right. Stephanie. We'll be tuning in. Sarah, thank you. Thanks, Sarah. 849, 73 degrees out. Pick three, we have 289, Fireball 6, Daily 4, 8648, eight, Fireball 6. And your cash 5, 3, 8, 12, 19, 21, Lotto, Texas, 8, 22, 26, 47, 48, 49. And there it is, Powerball 13, 32, 41, 58, 60. Powerball 14, power plays too. Good luck, we're right back. And the news you need to know before you go, a curfew put in place here in San Antonio, at least in the downtown portion last night after protests turned violent downtown. San Antonio city leaders issued the curfew until 6 a.m. this morning, but it will be in effect again later tonight through tomorrow. During this temporary curfew, no one can travel on the public streets downtown. Any violators could face a misdemeanor and be punished with a fine of up to $1,000 and the possibility of 180 days in jail. 
Just into our newsroom, we're getting a look at two of the people arrested last night during the protest. This is 44-year-old Joe Canales. He is facing charges of aggravated assault, engaging in a riot, evading arrest, and resisting arrest. And this is 21-year-old Wayne Ray Waldrop III. He is facing charges of engaging in a riot, obstruction of a passageway, and unlawful carry of a weapon. This is a developing story we are following closely. You can look more for information in our newscast and also on our website at kset.com. Racial unrest, anger, violence, protests, the death of George Floyd. Now, Nancy Pelosi and Minnesota Representative Ilhan Omar. What will happen next? What will the White House do? Can America come together? Sunday on ABC's This Week with George. And playing multiple sports and graduating in the top 1% of his class. It's what this great graduate has achieved tomorrow on GMSA at 6. We're going to introduce you to Jackson Macias. And we just got the pollen count into the newsroom. Mold is down from yesterday, but it is still high at 3,560 uh, mold spores per cubic meter of air. So causing some issues there. Grass is low. Now in today's forecast, it'll be mostly cloudy, but we will see an increase in the chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. No severe weather expected. A high in the mid 80s is possible today and we'll continue to carry a chance for scattered rain through Tuesday. Then we'll dry out by the end of the week. It'll be warm and humid. Highs in the 90s to start off June. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Before you go this morning in the midst of all of the chaos ensuing around the country, Nevada State Troopers' spontaneous act of kindness is now being noticed. It all happened on the Las Vegas Highway, so take a look. The dash cam recorded State Trooper rolling up to the scene where a car crash happened. The front end of the car smashed and the airboard airbags were actually deployed. There at the side of the road stood the vehicle's occupants, among them a five-year-old little girl clearly upset, so he decided to pick her up and comfort her. All right, that's all for now. Have a great day. Bye, guys.